Hi everybody. So now uh, we've converted, we've understood the multivariate regression problem as minimizing a certain matrix expression. And in, in this lecture I will um, explain how you actually do that calculation and, and how to put the answer in a nice form. And from that we'll be able to solve uh, the multivariate regression problem. Um, so let's, uh, let's see how that goes. So the first thing I want to point out is that um, I just want to remind you of where we are. So where we are is we have a data matrix X, which is in tidy format. And tidy format means that it has big N rows, each corresponding to a sample of the data. And it has K plus one columns each corresponding to a feature of the data. So each row is a model of car, and each column is a type is a feature of a car like its engine displacement or its, um, its weight or its acceleration. And the K plus first column is all ones. And that is for our trick to uh, avoid having to deal with the intercept by, um, by making a sort of special feature, which is all ones. And then we have our target data. These are, for example, the miles per gallon. This is an n by one column vector. And our goal is to find a k plus one by one vector m and with the i with the goal of um so that y minus x m squared is minimized Let me call this E and remind you that um, E is a um, kind of a version of the mean squared error up to the, uh, I mean, the mean squared error for this problem as a function of M1 up to MK plus one is one over N times E is one over N times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of y sub i minus the sum as j goes from 1 to k plus 1 of x i j m j. These entries in here are the differences between the true, the, the observed value of y, I mean, it's the difference between the observed value of y and the predicted value of y, which is given by this linear expression, and um, uh, our, our, this is just my nice way of writing y minus xm, and this is the thing that we want to minimize. We want to minimize e, and we're going to do that by taking partial derivatives, uh, and in fact, there in this case, there are k plus 1 variables, and so we're going to need to compute their m1 up to mk plus 1. And so we're going to need to compute the gradient of e, which is the vector whose entries are the partial derivative of e with respect to m1, partial derivative of e with respect to m2, and so forth, down to mk plus 1. Uh, this is the higher dimensional version of the gradient that you've seen in multivariable calculus where you would take maybe just the derivative with respect to x, y, and z. But here we have k plus 1 variables, so we take the derivative with respect to all of those. And that's what we're going to want to set equal to 0 to find our maximum value uh, for m1 up to, for to find our minimum value for e and the values for x, uh, for m that give us the best approximation. Let me just remind you of two uh, formulas. If A is a matrix whose entries are A, I, J, 
and it has, let's say, R by S, it's an R by S matrix. And B is a matrix whose entries are B, I, J, and it's an S by T matrix. Then C is an R by T matrix. And the formula that gives the entry C, I, J is the sum as K goes from um, 1 to S of A, I, K, B, K, J. So there are S columns in A and S rows in B. So these indices make sense, and that's how you do matrix multiplication. It's just good to have this uh, formula at hand. And the other thing I wanted to remind everybody about is the transpose of a, of a, um, a matrix. If A is the matrix AIJ, then A transpose is the matrix whose entries are AJI, and it's an S by R matrix. And it's obtained by switching the rows and columns of a matrix. So if in the two-dimensional case, if A is 1, 2, 3, 4, A transpose is 1, 3, 2, 4, which is obtained by uh, flopping, flipping the rows and the columns of the matrix. And it, it reverses the uh, numbers of dimensions. OK, with all of that prep work, we are ready to um, dive into this calculation. And rather than write everything out, I'm going to rely on the notes that I have posted on the web. And here's the formula that um, we're going to try to derive. There's a typo here, I should point out. This should be mk plus 1 here. Um, so the gradient, which is which are the derivatives, remember that e is y minus x m squared. Uh, we have a nice formula for it. It's minus 2 times x transpose y minus x transpose x m. And it's good to check to make sure that this makes sense. Remember that x is n by k plus 1 y is n by 1, and m is k plus 1 by 1. And if you use these dimensions and you think about this calculation, you will find out that this does, in fact, give a k plus 1 by 1 matrix, which is good because the left-hand side is a k plus 1 by 1 matrix. And um, once we have this formula, then, then we'll be able to set it equal to 0 to find the best m. So how do we do this calculation? Well, we start here with the formula for e. And this is the same formula, I believe, that I wrote here. And um, it, uh, it's, this is what we need to take the derivative of with respect to each of the different m's. So we're going to take the derivative of it with respect to mt, where here t is just some choice. Uh, it could be anywhere between uh, t is between 1 and k plus 1. And we're going to go ahead and take this derivative. And to do that, we use the chain rule. And so look at, first of all, we move the derivative inside the sum. We get a 2 coming down, so it's going to each of these. Let's look at this term here, just the inner term. The derivative of that is going to be 2 times yj minus the sum from 1 to k plus 1, xjs ms. Then, because of the chain rule, we have to take out the derivative of the inner part here with respect to m sub t. And the only place that that is going to happen is if we look at this sum and the coefficient of m sub t is xjt and all the other m's are, um, are their derivatives are zero. So we're going to end up pulling out a coefficient minus xjt. And that's what we have done here. We've pulled out the minus sign 
the 2 which comes from the square, and the xjt which comes from the chain rule. That's the whole calculus part of this. The rest of it is just summation and some linear algebra. So the first thing we do is we move the xj into the sum. So we distribute the xj across both terms. And now we look at the first term here, and we change the order of j and t to be t and j by looking at, instead of x, x transpose. Because remember, the t j th entry of x transpose is the j t th entry of x. So what is this right here? Well, the sum of x transpose t j y j, remember that um, t is fixed, so here's your x transpose, here's the t th row, x um, t1, x t2, and so forth. And here you have y1 down to yn. And so basically what you have here is the dot product of the teeth row of the matrix x transpose with the column vector y. And that's what I've written here using the abbreviated notation x transpose t colon for the teeth row of x transpose. And I've chosen that notation because, as we'll see in the lab, that's a, kind of a Python computer language way of expressing it. And so it's a, a nice way to keep track of it. We do the same thing in the second term. You see here we have xjt, xjs, but we replace this x by x transpose, and then we can switch the indices. And now we have xtj, xjs. We now reverse the order of summation so that the j sum comes first. And now this term right here is the matrix product that we looked at here. So this is the ts entry of the product of the matrices x, t, and x. And that's what I've written here, the ts entry of the matrix product x transpose x. And now we again have a, um, the teeth row of this matrix times the column vector m. So this sum here can be simplified as the teeth row of the matrix x transpose x times the column vector m. So what we've shown is that the teeth entry of the gradient of E is this formula. And if you stack up the, um, the different rows of X transpose and of X transpose X, then you you would end up with the formula that I've given up above because what we're saying here is that the, the first row of the gradient is the first row of x times y plus the first row of x transpose x times m. And the second entry here is the second row uh, of x transpose times y and the second row of x transpose x times m. And that's exactly what this formula says. So in fact, as I mentioned here in the notes, if you stack these up for the different rows, you get the formula that we were trying to prove. So we have a nice formula for the gradient uh, of, the, um, of, this, of the error that we're trying to calculate. And now, if we use this and we have the gradient of E is minus 2 x transpose y minus x transpose xm, and we want to set that equal to zero, we get a very nice um, matrix equation. We can forget about the minus two, and we can write this as x transpose xm equals x transpose y. And remember that m is the unknowns. This is a constant vector of size k plus one by one. And this is a con this is a k plus one by k plus one 
matrix. And this is a k plus 1 by 1 vector. And so if we introduce the notation D for the matrix x transpose x, which is k plus 1 by k plus 1, we can actually write that our solution M is D inverse x transpose y. And so we have solved, in a sense, I mean, not in a sense, this assumes here that D is invertible. And we'll have to look a little bit more closely as to what that condition means, but let's assume it for now. Assume that D is an invertible matrix. And what about the, uh, the error term that we were trying to minimize? Well, remember that the, the, um, the, predict, the, the formula we were using is that Y, the predicted values of Y, is our X times M. Because our, um, our error was the norm of Y minus X M squared, which is the difference between the predicted, well, between the, the Y, which are observed, minus the predicted. This is the thing that we were trying to minimize. And if we um, use our formula for M, we also get a nice formula for the predicted values. Namely, it's X D inverse X transpose Y. So um, just to maybe uh, relate this back to the two-dimensional picture, if you have the, two, the points that you're trying to fit the line to in the two-dimensional thing, and you have the line that you find, the line of best fit, which let's say goes like this, then um, the M and B correspond to the matrix M for this line Y equals MX plus B. And for each X here, you have the point that actually lies on the line. These are the predicted values. And those predicted values are the ones which are given by the formula um, x d inverse x transpose y. I mean, let's see, what is the dimension of this thing? Maybe that would help to clarify it. This is a n by 1. This is a k plus 1 by n. k plus 1 by k plus 1 n by k plus 1. So when all of this is multiplied together, this is an n by 1 column vector. And so each, just like y, y is also n by 1. So each entry of y predicted is the point on that's given by m1, x1, plus m2, x2, plus, and so forth. Uh, and the entry in y is the observed value. And so um, that's what the, uh, this is how, these are the predicted values that you would get if you use the linear formula um, and Y are the ones that you actually observed. So uh, this is a nice, these are, these formulas are simpler than the ones that we got in the two-dimensional case. There's none of this sum XX, sum of X squared and sum of Y squared and sum of XY. And the reason that those are not visible here is because they are hidden in the fact that we have to take the inverse of a k plus 1 by k plus 1 matrix. And when you take an inverse of a k plus 1 by k plus 1 matrix, uh, that's a complicated thing, but it looks very nice on paper. So uh, that's the story uh, of how to derive the formulas for multivariate linear regression.